Gadget UK here again, this time looking at a Zydec Amiga power supply. Um, so you can see some of the uh, stats in the back here, it'll provide 5 volts at 4.5 amps, that's pretty good, that's pretty beefy. I'm not sure how that compares to um, one of the original you know, Commodore branded uh, 500 power supplies, but still that's pretty good on the 5 volt line. Um, 12 volts, 1 amp, uh, minus 12.1 of an amp, that's really low actually, I'm amazed how little these provide on the, the minus uh, side there. I'm um, not sure what you use that, other than maybe the serial comms, um, maybe the audio, um, the audio op on needs that, I don't know, I don't know if there's uh, anything like that on here, but anyway, we'll um, get inside this, it looks like they're just normal screws, I think, they're not security screws by the looks of things, so I'll get those out, we'll have a look inside. Wow, that's looking a bit of a mess, can you see down here? I'm just wondering, because this sits like this, some, some liquid or something might have leaked through onto the board down there, so... Um, it's going to need cleaning up, um, obviously I'll check the fuse. Um, the, the, with something like this I'm sort of... What's that there? Yeah, just looking at that, that's just a bit of dirt. Um, I'm speculating perhaps a, a faulty switching transistor there. Um, could be caps. Um, or it could be maybe something wrong with the voltage reference or something. Um, we've got what looks like an opto isolator down here. Um, because the liquid's around here, maybe that opto's failed or something. Or, is that a diode? Uh, it's covered in shit. Um, so hopefully it's going to be something simple like that, perhaps. Um, if it's, you know, the fuse looks all right actually. I'll check it in a sec, measure it. But it's looking all right. Um, but I think the next step is to get this board out um, and clean up this area and just need to give it a bit of an inspection. Really, I think on both sides. So just doing a couple of quick checks here, uh, measuring between the ground on the connector, um, meters on DC mode um, on the switching transistor here. Sorry, switch it on again. Careful, I'm electric keep yourself here. Um, you can see 161 volts. So I think we've got you know we've got a switching voltage there. Um, doesn't seem to be anything on the output, strangely enough. So I'm thinking maybe that there's a problem with this opter down here. Um, I'll do some more measuring around, see what I can find. Well, this is just 30 seconds later, and you can see I've taken a resistor out of here. Um, I did some measurements, as I showed. I measured the, uh, the switching voltage, well, the voltage on the tab there. I'm not sure whether that's the emitter or what. But we had 160 volts there, so that gave me some confidence that the, uh, the AC input side was working. Okay, we've got a bridge. Uh, I don't know if that's a bridge. You've got some diodes down here, which are probably forming the bridge, actually. I'm not sure what that is. never seen one of those before. But anyway, um, I, I could tell, you know, that the switching part... Um, was probably okay there. Now the transform was silent. There was just nothing. Voltages on this side zero, just nothing at all. Um, I did measure the voltages on the, this uh, opto coupler as well. You know there was like 180 odd volts or something, 160 volts on one side. The other side was completely uh, nothing on any of the three pins. So at that point, I start to think the nothing was getting to the transformer. So just having a quick look around here, check some of these. There's like some startup resistors and things here. Uh, I think that's like uh, 470 ohm. That's all right. There's a one ohm down there. That's all right. So I thought, well, there's not a lot. There's not a lot else in between the sort of primary, you know, the input side and the output side. Um, so let's have a look at how the transformers connected up to the output, the switching um, transistor. Here. And uh, you've just got this resistor. I don't know if you can see it. It just goes to the couple of the pins on the transformer here. Well, sorry, it goes between the switching, um, the output, I think, of the uh, you know the switching transistor, um, and then goes through resistor into the transformer. So that that probably explains um, why it's not doing anything at all. Well, it does when you measure the resistor. It's um, I don't know if you can see that it's red, red, yellow. Um, and it just measures as open circuit, which uh, I'll just show you. Now there could be another fault that's caused this to go. Um, I mean, obviously the transistors, uh, the transistors, all right, um, as far as I can gather. Maybe the transformers failed or something, um, or maybe something else on the um, other side of the transformers caused it to pop. I don't know, but it's zero ohms, nothing. So um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is get another. Um, resistor, uh, fit it on there and perhaps just give it a go. So I've got two resistors on there, um, I've got one on the top side, one on the bottom, just to give me approximately the 220k or whatever it's supposed to be. Um, so I'm just going to uh, power this up now, so I'll just leave the camera connected there, I'm not sure whether it's switched on or off at the moment, so it might pop when I plug it in.
Don't know if you heard that. So maybe we've got a short uh, or something going on. Don't know, but it is making a noise now. So I might just measure the voltages on the uh, connector. Well, what do you know? I fixed it. Switch it on. What's the light? I think I've noticed on this Amiga, the drive light's not lit. I might need to look at that. This is uh, maybe it's because another disc in. Let me try a disc in this. You can hear it clicking away though. So 12 volts is there. The 5 volts is there. Let's try it again with a disc in. It's not this. This won't boot, but hopefully we'll see. Yeah, so that's fine. Um, I need to get the scope on it um, and check the actual voltages. I think this is one of these power supplies you, where you've got to do it under load as well. If you just measure the um, the pins and back there, I couldn't. You can't see anything. There's no voltages. But once it's actually connected up, it's working fine. So the other thing I've just done here, I've swapped out this. Um, I'll show you. And I don't think this desperately needed to be done, but um, it was just something I thought I'd check. It's an SCR. I thought maybe it was on uh, some output, you know, the short circuit protection there, basically, or overload protection. Um, and if I just measure this now, I'll show you. Put the meter on ohms. Um, I've got to think about this. It goes cathode, anode, gay, I think, CAG. So if we go um, between the outer two, between cathode and gay, uh, yeah, that's that was what I was getting originally. And I, th I thought that was a problem, but actually it's not on reflection. Um, but if you check between the gate... And the cathode. You can see we've got a resistance there um, in resistance mode, and the same the opposite way around. Now compare that to this one, which is uh, a good working brand new one. So, sorry, you probably can't see where I've got the, 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 the SCR there. Same pins, but nothing. Nothing at all. So I do think that was uh, a fault. So this has been on for 10 minutes now, no problems at all. I'm just going to measure the voltages, um, the 12 volt and minus 12 volts. Um, word of warning, because um, I don't think I've mentioned it on this video yet. Be very careful um, if you're working on something like this. If you've never done it before, I'd do a lot of studying first before you try and you know work on something like this yourself. Um, there's certain things you need to be aware of, you know, like the, 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 the main ballast cap here. Um, you can have something like 337 volts DC in that, even when it's switched off. You, you know, you put your fingers underneath or something on the can or something, you get a pretty nasty belt off it, um, potentially even fatal. Um, and it's the same with the uh, main switching transistor here. You know, you've got uh, a very high DC voltage generated from that. If you were to touch the heat sink or make contact with something, you know, one of the connections on there, it, it could be fatal. You could kill yourself. So you do need to be very careful with the things on this, the, the, the right hand side this side of the power supply here, you know, the mains input and high DC side. Um, on this side of the power supply it's a little bit safer, you've got lower voltages but you could still get a belt. Um, these caps aren't going to hold very much in the way of voltage, you know, because they're just going to be across the uh, supply lines and things there, you know, you're going to typically like 12 volts, it's going to be the maximum sort of voltage, maybe 15 volts or 30 volts depending on how the output side uh, works there. Um, but um, yeah, so all it was really was that, you know, that SCR needed swapping out, um, and the resistor down here. Now, I have ordered um, some 220k resistors, um, I'm going to order half a watt, because these, you can see, the one that broke, the one that's faulty, it's home circuit, it's a quarter of a watt, that's a pretty tiny little uh, resistor there to feed the output, um, you know, the IDC there into the, um, well it's not really DC, it's switched, doesn't it, um, you know, the, the, the power input into this transformer. It seems like a pretty weedy resistor to me for, for doing that. Um, so yeah, a, a half a watt would be a good idea. So I think I'll probably take this to pieces at some point again in future and swap that um, over. But um, yeah, I'll, uh, that's I say, I'll just check the, uh, the plus 12, minus 12, uh, and I'll show you the 5 as well on there. So I'll just quickly try and show you the voltages here. It's going to be pretty difficult, this. Uh, I can get a ground on the side of those resistors there. 
the shaft to move this over a little bit here. Uh, oh god, this is difficult. Oh, seriously, impossible to do this. Um, yeah, so we'll measure the 12 volt first, this is plus 12. So as you can see, 12.5, 9, that's not bad. Um, the 5 volts, so I'll try and move these around so I'm not obscuring the shot. Uh, oh, 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 oh god, this is not easy. It really isn't. Uh, let's go and get onto that 5 volts, there we go. 5.28, that's pretty good. And then the final one is, move my hand around. The minus five volts again. It could be quite difficult to get a reading here. Let's give it a try. God, yeah, the five volt is not very exposed. Sorry, the minus twelve is not very. The minus twelve is not very exposed. That's quite hard to get a connection. But you can see minus eleven point two three. That's okay. Um, so yeah, it's running fine. Um, I'll well, connect it all to the TV, just make sure the Amiga's working alright, but I think we'll call that a success. So there we go, all reassembled and powering the Amiga here for a good hour now, no issues at all. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.